Okay, guys, it's uh, closing time, right? So here we are, got my shower ready to go. I'm using cement board. Now, let me just talk about the process here. You have to make a decision when you're doing a shower. There's a lot of different options, okay? Um, there are programs out there, and, and we're going to call them systems, okay? Because you really want to pick a system and then stick with it. The system I'm going to use is a cement backer board, not a drywall. They've come a long way with the technology, the application, and the price. It's very, very reasonable now. So yes, it's more expensive than drywall. It cost me about $200 to do all of this in cement board versus, I don't know, maybe $100 in drywall, right? Not even. So yeah, it's an investment, but it's one of those things where no matter what waterproofing system you're going to use, and no matter what the claims are that they make, everything is subject to, to failure based on the integrity of the installation. So if you think through to, are you perfect? Nobody's perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. I've done something horribly wrong and I can't tell. Yep. I'm an idiot. Then using a system that allows you a lot more mercy if you make a mistake is a really great system. So for instance, if I go with cement board, the wall board itself will never decay even if water gets into it. Okay. So then I've got lots of options for how I want to finish. I can use um, a red guard paint and I can tile right over that with thin set. Um, I can use a uh, sheet membrane and I can do all of that waterproofing and vapor barrier proofing as well, right? Make it vapor proof. You just gonna think end, to the, end from the beginning. What's my system? What do I want it to perform for? Is it a cost issue that you're trying to do a budget shower? We've got videos on budget showers. You can check that out. I'll put a link in the video description, but this is not a budget shower for me. I'm not gonna go through all of this work to build something beautiful custom that isn't gonna last 50 years. So we're going with the cement board. We're gonna use the right screws. We're gonna use the right sealants and the right joint tapes. And we're gonna go through the whole process. But basically what you wanna remember when you're doing something like this, anything that finishes on an open wall, you can do at the end, okay? Anything that's in an alcove, which means it's like a letter C. So I got a wall, I got a cross, and it comes out again. These kinds of areas have to be done first, okay? So I've got an alcove over here. And I got two alcoves here. So those are the three walls that I want to start with because every other measurement I take, I want to take once those walls are installed because it, it moves, right? It adjusts. So if I measure this right now, it's 23. But once that cement board's on, it's only 22 and a half. So to keep your life simple, pick your alcove walls, close them first, and then work your way out of the shower. All right? It's that simple. It's going to make life real easy for you. So let's get our measurements for the alcove and we'll start cutting cement board. This is exactly 32 frame to frame, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it 31 and a half. This is not finished carpentry. <laughs> you don't have to make it perfect. What you have to do is make sure that there's an overlap. So a quarter inch gap on each side makes the installation simple and it makes sure that the next half inch board will have positive contact at the joint. That's really all we're looking for. Okay, we don't have to make sure that it's tight to the wood. A little bit of breathability here is not an issue. So it's 31 and a half, top, middle, and bottom because we built this with a laser level and that makes our life simple. And we get all the way to the top. Here we go. And we are at 90 inches. Okay, so 90 inches. Now the board itself comes 36 by five foot, which is 60. So I'll put the first piece in. I've got a little adjustment to make here because this light box is in the way. And we're gonna address that in the later, a little later in the video as to how we're gonna build out around this. Uh, today, we're just gonna get it wrapped up and sealed up so that we can start moving forward because the next project here is putting in our floor drain and sloping our pan and then doing waterproofing. So that's that one. We got the measurement here, 39. So we'll go 38 and a half because that means I'm turning the board the other way. I'm going to have a 36 inch piece, which goes to there. So I'm going to cut that piece in first and then I'm going to measure up to my corners to be able to draw that line. This one is the same 36. Okay. So I need two pieces at 38 and a half, and then I'm going to cut another piece for this and another piece that goes on top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang my 36 from this edge going down. I don't mind if I got a three inch piece on the bottom because um, I'm going to be beefing up my floor almost three inches as well. So it'll only just be there to kind of give some backing to put everything together with a thin set later. 
and I don't want to have a joint on my wall just after my shower, that would increase the likelihood of failure. And uh, let me just cut those and we'll get started. Take the sheet, cheat sheet outside. We're good to go. Um, also, we're going to change the blade on the saw. I'm going to show you the blade that you need to use when you're cutting cement board. All right. So here's our new cement board. Uh, they got a new product out here and they've actually increased the um, waterproofing of the system. It's built into the mix. So that's nice. Uh, never be afraid of an improvement that just makes good sense like that. I'm still gonna rely on a waterproofing system in addition to that. And it costs a few more bucks, but in today's market, sometimes, you know, you just gotta buy what's available on the shelf. They're gonna select for you what your options are. So if you want to do lots of shopping and go all over town, just check out different systems, go right ahead. But me, I would rather just get things going. Here we go. Put that on there. Push the lock right here. Okay. And, nope, oh, unlock, we gotta go the other way. There we go. Okay. Once you get it started, it just comes off with your fingers. Take that, take that. Like that. Now, I'm out of town, so I don't have my own cement blade. <laughs> so I had to buy a new one, and uh, Diablo makes one for a cement board. For, it's called the Hardy Blade. They've obviously joined teams, and this is Hardy Backer Board. So that's what's going on there. Uh, it's exactly the same as the one I have at home. It's four blades, it cuts cement board. There we are. All right, and to lock it, just push it down and squeeze together. One squeeze is all you need, okay? We are good to go. <laughs> Let me just suggest whenever you're putting a cord together on an extension, tie it in a knot and then plug them together. You will find that it is much less likely that that's gonna come apart halfway through your cut and you won't go crazy. Now, let's put this wrench back inside the tool there we go. Yeah. I'm going to be moving a little slow here today. So I don't have a drywall square. Those are my measurements. The other option for this, of course, and I know even with dealing with cement board, you can do this. You can take your first mark, put your marker on it, set your finger up as a guide. Let me show you how well this works. Well, I'm close. <laughs> That's human error. Whew. Yep, that makes a lot of mess, right? That's why we're cutting outside. So <laughs> forgive the occasional interruption with a lawnmower or something, all right? So here's a great trick for us when we're doing cement board. Throw a couple scraps underneath or a two by four or something and adjust the depth on your blade, right? We're only going through half inch material. So it'll make your blade last longer. If you set your blade for three quarters or one inch, all right? That means less of the surface of the blade. You see, so this is a brand new one. That's why I did it that way. I wanted to show you. Look how much of the surface area of that blade was cutting through the material. Now, all of that is friction caused by the passing through that material on both sides with the heat. And that is what wears your blades down, getting them hot, okay? So by limiting how much blade is going through the material, I'm gonna reduce the amount of heat that I'm building up here by, my, wow, maybe 75%. 75% less heat. That is a good thing. Now, here we go. The only trick is when you're cutting with a short like this, you're gonna to wanna to get the guard out of the way when you start, okay? Don't need to measure. I'll just trace that line. Board number two. Ah. Ah. Okay, let's go inside and get those installed. All right, guys, uh, 
get yourself some of these markers, okay? They're called ink saw by Milwaukee. You're gonna to want to do this every time you're working. And you just draw your center lines for the studs. That's it. And we know we have fillers on each side. That's good. We can put this away. We're gonna take our wall board with the pink side out, not the sticker side. <laughs> Don't install the cement board with the sticker side out, okay? It's gonna affect the installation. Up we go. Okay, and split the gap on the difference. There we are. That's not terrible. Hey, you know it's level when it doesn't fall over, huh? All right. And we're going to be using these fasteners right here. They're a T25 screw, okay? You'll notice that this screw is very unique. It has um, ribs around the edges for grabbing. Look at the head of that screw. It looks almost like a saw blade, okay? The idea here is this screw, when it's installed, the top of this is flush with the surface. It doesn't sit on top. It buries right in and it really grabs, okay? So that's what this is designed for. This screw is very unique to this product and you must use the screw for best results, all right? Now, with my marker here, that makes my life so simple, right? Now, the head of that screw is sticking out. It's not done yet. You see it grabbed and pulled? Now I'm flush. Just make sure every screw is installed nice and flush. All right, and then when you go to do your waterproof membrane, if you're using it, or your paint and then your tile, you're not gonna have ridges and surfaces interrupting with causing your um, lippage. <laughs> you're not gonna cause lippage if you have your screws all sunk in properly. All right, now we just go like this. We're gonna go up here now. And we're going to be putting in a screw, very much like drywall, every 16 inches. If you're not sure what 16 inches is, this is 12, all right, and a little bit more. <laughs> That's that simple. You can use more than you need. You just don't wanna use less, okay? I always double check that they're sunk. That. You don't neglect your edges. Remember, we put in the backing so that we can have something to screw to. All right, now I'm just setting my box here so the edge is in the middle of my stud. As a marker, remember, I want to install nice and tall here. And I want to get it up nice and flush. There we go. They actually recommend that you don't screw within one and a half inches of the edge. And the irony of that is <laughs> two by fours are an inch and a half. So you're not going to double frame everything, all right? So <laughs> just take your time, drill in the screw, back it out if you have to, if you're running into issues. Um, this kind of damage here, all right, not going to be a problem, okay? Don't panic, because what we're going to come do when we're done, we'll have a piece here, we'll put mesh tape in, just like we're patching drywall. And that crack will then become integrated with the mesh and the thin set, and everything will be fine. So don't panic. If you have minor damage, just treat it like a drywall repair. All right, now we put this in here right to the ground. We'll get the first screw in anyway. All right, there we go. Starting to come together, eh? Already feels like a shower. Now there really is not a whole lot to teach here um, about backer board except that because it's cement, you would have an advantage over drywall. You see this uh, doesn't have a back here. I have got wood within a couple inches of that corner. So this is a perfectly acceptable installation right here. Okay, not quite flush yet. There we go. That's good. That, it's so rigid. It's not like drywall where we're gonna have an issue where we're gonna risk damage, okay? so. 
If you have some framing within three inches, I would say, even you can push it to four, you're okay. You don't have to fuss around putting in plywood behind everything. With a work with cement board, it gives you a little bit of flex flexibility with your framing, right? All right, now. One more thing, these screws come in a lot of different lengths, okay? This is inch and a quarter, which is perfect because they're going half inch board and then we only have three quarters of depth into the wood. Now, if everybody else in the world does their job right, there's no plumbing or electrical within that three quarters of an inch because that's building code. So, don't buy a two inch screw if you're not exactly sure there's nothing there. All right. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at my screw here and I'm looking at that black line. I'm drawing a line, okay? And I'm gonna go with that. That's how I find my stud. Now I can just kind of draw, draw that line, connect the dots. You can cut all of your cement board with your woodworking tools. They're just gonna be really hard on your blades.